This week's episode of A Word to Live By is presented by Metabel Okulaja. Please listen, be blessed, and have a happy 2013. Hello friends, my name is Metabel here with this week's episode of A Word to Live By. And it is 2013. Happy New Year, everyone. Now, I know what I'm talking about. I'm in Minneapolis, and the time is right about 10.08 p.m. right now. But I just got a text from my friend, which uh, actually sounded so beautiful. She said, we have seen 2013, and it is beautiful. And we eagerly await you joining us in 2013. And that is quite right. In Australia right now, and in New Zealand, and in other parts of the world, it is already 2013. So, Happy New Year, everyone! Welcome to 2013. I really, really thank God for being able to make this video today because I actually haven't been feeling that great. I've been conquering a cold, as, I, <laughs> as I've been saying it to my friends and anyone who would ask me how I'm feeling. I have been conquering a cold. And, you know, I was thinking about what I would share this week's Word to Live By. The video was actually supposed to air yesterday, but I felt that I would wait and kind of usher in the new year with a brand new episode of A Word to Live By. Now, before I go on, I'd just like to give thanks to God because without Him, I could not have done anything that I have done this year. And I'm sure that we can all say the same. I remember approximately two years ago, two or three years ago, when these videos started, actually it was in 2010, it's moving on now to the third year, and I made the first video quite out of a fluke, and it just kept, you know, I just kept on doing it, and at one time I stopped doing it and a friend of mine, a dear friend of mine, just called me up on the phone and thank God for dear friends. And this friend said to me, oh, so a word to live by is a flash in the pan, right? And I said, no, but I was out of town. And he said, so what? You keep on making the videos even if you're out of town. And I took it up as a challenge and look at where we are today. And this is just the beginning. And that's what I want to focus though this week's Word to Live By on today. This is just the beginning. Uh, 2003, as the Lord has laid it on my heart, if I can manage to find my notes here, <laughs> I think this is a first for me, um, if I can manage to find my notes, is titled, Increase Bursting Forth Speedily Unto Fruitfulness. The title is, This is just the beginning. Increase bursting forth speedily onto fruitfulness. And that's exactly the way I see my life playing out this year. That's exactly how I see your life playing out this year. And I don't know if I finished off my sentences with regards to how grateful I am to God, but I'm really grateful to God as to how far He has brought me this year. This year, I've been privileged to come into the beginnings of the fullness of what God has been preparing me for over the past three years. I have been privileged to publish a book, um, to begin writing articles that have a wider readership. I have um, stepped into the role of beginning to mentor some um, younger uh, women and young ladies. I am slated to um, speak at a leadership conference next year, actually conduct a little workshop in a leadership conference next year. And for all these things, and for so much more than he has done in my family, in my own life, I am grateful. And while I was mulling on these things, the Lord just kind of laid some things on my heart. And these things came from the book of Genesis. And everyone knows how I love the book of Genesis. And I was just thinking about the Garden of Eden and how the Lord, you know, created this paradise, this oasis that he would put the man that he created, the man that he made after his own image and in his own likeness, 
where he would place this uh, man. And Eden is said to be like heaven. It is a typification or a symbolic representation of paradise. And Eden, the Bible says, is a physical place. And because the Bible describes it as being so and describes the fact that God set aside a garden in Eden for Adam and Eve to tend. And without wasting much time, I'm going to go into the scriptures for today. I am reading from Genesis chapter 2, verses 7 to 15. And the Lord God formed man out of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and man became a living soul. And the Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden, and there he put the man whom he had formed. And out of the ground made the Lord to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food, the tree of life also in the midst of the garden, and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And a river went out of Eden to water the garden, and from thence it was parted and became into four heads. It was one river out of Eden that parted and became four heads. The name of the first is Pison, that is, that this is it which compasseth the whole land of Havila, where there is gold. The name and the name of the second river is Gihon. The same is that that compasseth the whole land of Ethiopia. And the name of the third river is Hidekel, that is, which goeth out towards the east of Assyria. And the fourth river is Euphrates. And the Lord God took the man and put him into the garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it. I'm sure we're wondering, what in the world is she talking about, rivers, and what does that have to do with 2013? Well, we will see. Now, I got curious about the meanings of the names of these rivers. And as the Bible says, the river started out as one river and then divided into four heads. And we will realize that four is a very, very significant um, number in the scriptures. We'll not go into that today, but we can see that four comprises many things like uh, north, east, south, and west, four, um, um, four points on the compass. And we see the river here at this time, and there are many other uh, examples of the significance of the number four. But looking at these rivers and looking at the meanings of the names of these rivers, the Lord brought to my mind what I should expect in the year 2013 in my Eden, in the place that God has placed me, that he especially made for me and told me to tend and to keep. That is my life and the part of God's kingdom, the part of Eden that I occupy. Now, the meanings. The first river was named Pison, and Pison means increase. And the Bible talks about this being from the region of Havilah, where there is much gold. And they saw, you know, some people will say increase, well, spiritual increase. Yes, spiritual increase, all well and good. But specifically, Pison means increase as of in number one, gold, number two, precious metal, number three, as a measure of weight, number four, of brilliance, splendor. That is, first river means increase of gold, precious metal, measure of weight, brilliance, and splendor. The second river named Gihon, meaning bursting forth. And it is described as one of the four rivers of the Garden of Eden and a spring near Jerusalem where the anointing and the proclaiming of Solomon as king took place. Hmm. So it is bursting forth. Bursting forth. 
increase bursting forth. The name of the third river was Hidekel. And Hidekel means rapid. So now we have increase bursting forth rapidly. And the name of the fourth river is Euphrates. And can you guess what the meaning of Euphrates is? <laughs> I didn't, but I was so excited by it. Euphrates means fruitfulness. Fruitfulness. And the Euphrates actually is the only river that we can name today as existing. And that is so indicative of what the Lord said we should do. He said we should be fruitful and our fruitfulness is evident. Euphrates is the largest and longest river of Western Asia and arises from two chief sources in the Armenian mountains and flows into the Persian Gulf, hmm. right in the area of the present day Israel. So the four rivers, Pison, Gihon, Hidekel, and Euphrates, when we put it all together, means or signifies increased, increased bursting, uh, increase bursting forth rapidly onto fruitfulness. I will say that again. Increase bursting forth rapidly onto fruitfulness. And that is what I believe that our 2013 will bring for us. It will bring increase bursting forth rapidly onto fruitfulness as we occupy the area of the kingdom of God that the Lord has asked us to tend. Now we all know from scriptures that water signifies a type of uh, or uh, uh, symbolizes the word. So, this increase, bursting forth rapidly onto fruitfulness, comes by way of water. That is, it comes by way of the word. Hallelujah! And the Bible says that this river watered Eden. And at that time, there was no rain yet upon the face of the earth, but the Lord caused a mist to come upon the garden, and so that there would be moistness and lushness. So what we're looking at is a supply of water, that is the word, that brings an increase, an increase bursting forth rapidly onto fruitfulness that waters the plants in the garden and the mist that watered the Garden of Eden at that time. And as we know it, mist is like um, the, the, the uh, evaporated form of water the airy form of water, the water mixed in with the spirit that will bring in the lushness, the fullness, and the abundance in our lives. But we cannot attain it without drinking from the river. And we know that Jesus is the river of life. And the book of Revelations also talks about the river of life that flows in the new Jerusalem. And the Bible says that there are trees on either side of it. And every month it brings forth a new fruit. And I prophesy that in the year 2013, every year will bring forth a new fruit for you and for me in the name of Jesus. Increase bursting forth rapidly unto fruitfulness. Hallelujah. Now, the other thing that I just wanted to mention really quickly before I finish today is a place which the Lord again brought to my mind called Engedi. I wrote about it in my book when I talked about my prayer aujourd'hui. And if you haven't gotten a copy of that book, this is your opportunity to go get your copy. I just thought I'd put that in a little bit, but forgive me for doing so. But Engedi is actually a place that exists right now in Israel. And the curious thing about it is that Engedi is a sort of oasis and it is also fed by four springs. Isn't that interesting? Four springs, much like the Garden of Eden. And interestingly, Engedi is where David fled to when Saul was pursuing him, and that's where he regained his strength to go back and to uh, go reign as king after Saul's death. We praise God because we serve a God who has just made it his aim 
to bless us abundantly, to cause us to fruitfully multiply abundantly. But my brothers and my sisters, we cannot do that in 2013. I am very much assured of that by the Lord, that we cannot do that except we immerse ourselves in his word and in uh, in his word by his spirit. Unless we seek and we search after him. There is a river and the streams whereof make glad the city of God the tabernacle of the Most High God, his holy habitation. And that river brings forth increase, fruitfulness, rapidly bursting forth. Increase, bursting forth rapidly onto fruitfulness. So this year, it is not about, it's not going to be about the blessings that we're going to get. It's not because of the fruitfulness, but it is because we serve a God who has said, in blessing, I will bless you. And in multiplying, I will multiply you. And in you, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. It is for a purpose. It is so that the world will be blessed. So this year, as we press into the Lord, know that the Lord has said concerning me, concerning you, that he is causing the rivers of the word of God to flow into our lives, to water our lives, even as those rivers watered the Garden of Eden, the river of, as I will go again into it here, the river of Pison, which means increase of gold and of brilliance and splendor. Gihon bursting forth, Hidekel rapidly, Euphrates unto fruitfulness. Again, increase bursting forth rapidly unto fruitfulness. Let us keep these words with us this year. Let us keep them in our minds as we meditate upon the word of God. Let us know that he has purposed and he has promised us this year increase bursting forth rapidly onto fruitfulness. Thank you so much for listening. Welcome to 2013. Be blessed in the Lord. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. This year, let us encourage each other and we will go on to prosper as we keep his word in our hearts because his words are words to live by. Thank you. God bless you and have a Fabulous 2013.